In my last video, I showed you how you can set up a VPN server on your own home network. This allowed you to access your network from anywhere in the world and also use internet resources entirely securely. This time, I want to show you how you can install a VPN gateway. This will allow any device on your home network to be able to access resources on the internet entirely securely, regardless of whether they would normally allow you to install a VPN or not. All you need for this is a Raspberry Pi. Let me show you how to set it up. Hello, Pi geeks and techno nerds all around the world. My name's Jeff, and I'm an IT professional who's been in the industry for over 30 years. In my spare time, I like nothing more than putting Raspberry Pi projects together. Sure you do too. If you like what you see here, please hit that like button, subscribe to see more, and also click that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Okay, so why would anyone want a VPN gateway on their home network? There's actually a whole bunch of reasons. You may just want to protect the traffic from your devices going out to the internet with an extra layer of security. So if someone did hack into your wireless network or something like that, they couldn't look at the traffic from your devices that are going out to the internet and back. Another reason may be if you need access to someone else's network. Let's say that you were helping your parents out manage devices on their network and you needed access into that whenever. You could set up a VPN gateway that could have a connection always on to a VPN server at their place. That would then give any devices on your network the ability to communicate with any devices at their place. So you can manage their network, troubleshoot issues, anything like that. But one of the most useful cases is where you have a device such as a TV streaming stick or something like that, where you can't normally install a VPN client onto it. By having a VPN gateway, you could still benefit from that extra layer of security for that device's network access. Let me show you a diagram to illustrate what I'm talking about here. In this first diagram, you can see a representation of a very conventional network access. You've got a PC on your network. It talks out through your home router out to the internet. These network packets are picked up by a router at the far end, and that forwards on those packets to whatever device you're trying to talk to. However, with a VPN connection, your PC could talk to a VPN gateway that has an always on connection to a VPN server at the far end. This connection is fully secured and encrypted. And when it gets to its destination at the far end, that device has no idea where the packets have come from. As far as it's concerned, all of the packets have come from the VPN server. So it's also a really great way of hiding where you are in the world. All of this is really surprisingly easy to set up. All you need is a Raspberry Pi and an SD card that you can install the operating system onto. Everything else is just pure software. So let's go and take a look how to install all of this. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 for this, but feasibly you could use any Raspberry Pi aside from a Pico. Now, personally, I wouldn't use a Pi Zero or Zero 02W for this project. It's better to use a wired Ethernet connection into your router. As such, it would be best to use a Pi 3, 4 or 5. If all you have is a Pi Zero, don't worry, it will work just fine. You just may not be able to get the same level of network throughput that you otherwise could get. The first thing to do is install Raspberry Pi OS. For this project, I would recommend using Raspberry Pi OS Lite. It doesn't come with a graphical desktop, but equally, it doesn't need it. There's no GUI to this VPN gateway, so a graphical desktop would just be chewing up valuable CPU and memory resource. But again, you do you. If you want to have the GUI there, go right ahead. Now, if you've never installed Raspberry Pi OS before, no problem. Just go ahead and take a look at the video that I've put together on the subject. It's really easy to follow and doesn't take very long at all. Once you've got Raspberry Pi OS installed, your system should be looking something like this. It will just be prompting you to log in. So just provide the credentials that you configured your installation with. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually install the VPN software itself. Now, I'm going to be using OpenVPN here. If you want to use WireGuard or any other VPN service of your choice, go right ahead. But just be aware that portions of this video will be quite specific to OpenVPN. 
Now, in order to install OpenVPN, you just need to run this command here. The next thing you'll need is a client configuration file for your VPN. Now, this contains all of the details of the host that you're going to connect to, along with some certificate data identifying your VPN client and the certification authority that created that client certificate. Now, all of this is quite complex, but I covered it all in my last video. And you can catch up with that just here. I suggest you take a look at it as it talks about how to create these VPN client configuration files. Once you have that, all you have to do is copy it into the slash etc slash openvpn slash client directory on your Raspberry Pi. If we take a look at my config file, you can see that in the remote section, it says which server it's going to be connecting to. There are then the three certificates provided in line. Firstly, there's the CA public key. This is the public key of the certification authority that created the user certificates. The cert section contains the public key of the user and the key section contains the private key of the user. Again, if you take a look at my prior video, that explains what all of these are. Now we've got the client configuration, we can just try out starting up the OpenVPN software. This is done by running these two commands. In those commands where you see the at OpenVPN at the end, this is actually referencing the start of the file name of your config file. In our case, this was called openvpn.com. So depending on what the name of your config file is there, put in the appropriate name after the at symbol. We can check that that is now running with this command. And here you can see that everything has started up successfully. If I now take a look at the network devices on the Raspberry Pi, there's a new one that's been created. That ton zero device at the end, it represents the virtual network device that has been created by the VPN connection. The next thing that we need to do is to provide some rules onto the Raspberry Pi that allow it to behave like a router. Essentially, what it's going to do is just route all traffic back and forth between the ETH0 device and the TUN0 device. In order to set this up, you'll need some configuration files for your Raspberry Pi system. Now, I've provided all of these in my GitHub. I've provided a link to this in the description below. All you need to do is go to the code section and say download zip. This will download all of the files that you see here within the repository. Once it's downloaded, just copy that straight over onto your Raspberry Pi. I've done that here. Now you can just unzip the file with this command. Then just move into the VPN gateway dash main directory. The first part of the configuration here is to enable IP forwarding on your Raspberry Pi. To do this, we just have to copy that 99ipforward.conf file into the sysctl directory. After this, we need to set up all of the rules that will enable the traffic to flow between our network devices. For this, we need this software called iptables. You can install that with this command here. It prompts us for a couple of questions along the way. Just take the default yes responses. Once that's installed, just run the script provided to set up the necessary rules. Now, by default, these won't survive a reboot of your Raspberry Pi, so you need to use the netfilter persistent command to save them. You can do that with this. I've also provided a script to clear the IP tables configuration should you need to. However, hopefully you'll never need to run that. Once it's all set up, just go ahead and reboot. Now the box is rebooted, let's just log in again and make sure that everything looks right. I'm going to install an extra piece of software here called JQ that will help me test out that everything's running. You don't really need to do this unless you really want to. Okay, 
First off, let's make sure our VPN is running. So far so good. Now my VPN here is connecting to a box in the United States. I can prove now that my Raspberry Pi thinks it's in the United States with this command here. And there you go. I can also prove that if I switch off the VPN, it then thinks it's back in the United Kingdom again. Great, everything seems to be working. Now let's see if we can do something a bit more interesting and reconfigure my PC so that it's using this Raspberry Pi as its gateway. But first, I need to switch on the VPN connection again. Now, in order to make my PC use the Raspberry Pi as a gateway, I need to go into its network settings here. Firstly, I want to change its DNS server so it's not using my Pi-hole DNS server anymore. The VPN won't be able to see that unless I add a specific static route for it. So right now, I'll just set it to one of the Cloudflare DNS servers. After this, I just need to change the gateway section of my IP settings and give it the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Then I can just click apply on that and disconnect and reconnect my network. Now that's set up, my PC will be using the Raspberry Pi as its default gateway. Let's take a quick look at the impact that's had on my internet browser. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to that same URL that we used from the Raspberry Pi command line. And here you can see that it does think that my PC is now in the United States. Plus, if I go to one of my streaming services like Paramount Plus and I sign in, I can now access all of these US Paramount Plus services. For instance, if I want to start watching Star Trek Picard, I can. And there you can see that's starting to play. I'll keep it muted to avoid a copyright strike and just stop it right there. Now, just to prove there are no smoke and mirrors here, I'll go back to my network settings and set myself back to my normal router. And now I'll go back to my browser. And I'll completely reload the Paramount Plus website. Okay, I'll go ahead and try to sign in. Now this time, I don't have an account for Paramount Plus in the UK. So it's asking me to pick my plan. So let alone being able to watch anything, I don't actually have the service in this country. So that proves that the VPN gateway is working really, really well. Now my VPN connection is to my friend's house in the United States. And so I should also be able to access network devices on that network. Right now, as you can see here, I'm not using the VPN gateway. And as such, if I go to a terminal window, I shouldn't be able to access one of these boxes. And indeed, that fails to connect. So let me go back to my network settings again. Then let's reconnect to the VPN gateway. Now, if I go back to my terminal and I retry that connection, we should have a difference. And there we go. It took a little bit of a second to establish, but I can now log in. Perfect. So now I can manage other stuff on my friend's network on their behalf. In this day and age, we all need to be vigilant to protect our own data and our own network security. And VPNs are a great way of securing that. Through this video and my prior one, you now know how to set up your own VPN server and your own VPN gateway. So you can both secure your browsing no matter where you are, and also from your devices on your home network, have them connect out to the internet in a really, really secure way. So I really hope this has been very useful for you. But that's it for now. Once again, if you like what you see here, please click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and also hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Thanks so much for watching till the end. And until next time, bye for now.